Okay, we're back today, and today what I'd like to start on is writing functions. And uh, let's make this brush a little smaller. So what I kind of want to do with functions today is I want to go through some of the features of it and how they work. So the first thing is, if your function's going to return, so how do you write a function? So first is the function header. When you write a function, the first thing you need to specify is the return data type. Now, think of int main. Int main is actually, this is the return data type, okay? This is the name of the function, then come the arguments. Now, so far we haven't provided any arguments, and then comes your opening brace. This is exactly the same way that you write a function. Let's write a function called foo. Uh, let's say that foo accepts, uh, sorry, returns an integer, the name of the function, and then we have to specify what the function accepts. So let's say foo takes, very, very simple, right? Let's say foo takes two integers, okay? And let's say foo will return the sum. Return x plus y. So here's a function. Okay, we've got to close it. And we're in this case, this is what we're returning. And we've specified we're going to return that data type here. So we can't return a different data type. And by the way, we have to return something because it's expecting a return. This is the name of the function, and here are the arguments list. Now the arguments list is separated by a comma, and in addition, each variable has to, be, has to have its data type defined before the name of the variable, okay? Um, so this is the way in which your function is um, constructed. Now sometimes, you might have a function that um, doesn't return anything. So in that specific case, if your function doesn't need to return anything, you can use the term void. And void here specifies that we're not going to be returning anything. Okay? And in this case, you could write your function and then you don't have to have a return statement and you, you would end it. Okay, so it might just be used for some other purpose other than returning something. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I want to go over is how are arguments passed in C, C++ to a function? And the answer is everything is pass by value. So you need to remember this and you need to understand what it means. So let's take, let's take this example here, for example, this void foo, and um, let's, 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 let's uh, put, fill in the line here. Let's say x equals 2, okay? And let's call this function from, from int main. I'm not going to write all, all this stuff, but let's just call it, and let's say I call, I call it like this. Let's say I say um, uh, int, this is in, let's pretend this is in int main. I say x equals 1, and then I'll go foo x. And so now, if I was to go c out x, what am I going to get? Well, this is an interesting scenario. So what we need to do is we kind of need to draw a diagram here of, so let's just fill it in here. Let's just go int main. Okay, there. Here is the main scope and here is the foo scope. So here in, in main we have a variable called x and its value is 1. Okay. Then we send x to the function foo, and then we set that x to 2. 
So there is an x inside foo as well. And then we assign it to a value of 2. The question now is, when we do this C out here, we're obviously C outing this one, the one in main. But what's the value? Is it a 1 or is it a 2? The answer is, it's 1. So in this case, our output would be 1, not 2. Uh, and, the, and the reason for this is because both of these variables, even though they have the same name, are in different scopes. And, they're, and the, when, you're passing, when you're passing this information, when, when x goes to here, it's passed by value. In other words, you're not actually passing um, a reference to the variable. You're not passing the variable itself. You're passing what's in the variable, the value of the variable. Okay. So the, the value of this variable was 1. So, so this initially, this guy becomes 1. But then we set it to 2. So this gets overwritten. And now it's a 2 in this line. But you understand that these two locations are separate locations in memory. They're not the same uh, variable, even though they might have the same variable name. And that's an example of pass by value. So, so, here's the, so here's the example that I, that I wrote out. I've coded it now. And l when we run this, you'll see that the output is indeed on line 14. It's a 1, not a 2. See? So I am getting a 1. Now, the question is, what if we want the function to modify the variable, then how do we do it? In other words, in C++, you have the option of forcing passing by reference. That means that you, you like this is the default behavior. Okay, where 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 you have pass by uh, value. This is the so that's what it does normally pass by value. Okay, but what if you want to pass by reference? So passing by reference can be achieved by one character. All you do is you put an ampersand. Oops, you put an ampersand before the variable like that. And now this becomes, we're passing x by reference. So watch what happens now when I run this. We get 2 instead of 1. So let's put that here as a comment. Placing ampersand before, vari before variable uh, employs pass by reference and and this is this this has to be explicit and also just want to specify this feature is not available in C you have to do it using a different method which I'll teach you after we learn pointers it's still possible to do but we have to use pointers to achieve this Whereas in C++, there's really no, uh, there's no requirement to understand pointers yet at this point. All you have to understand is that now this x, whatever you do to it, it's the same x as the one in uh, main. So in other words, if I was to draw a picture of this, right? So this was this is default pass by value. So what does 
what does pass by reference looks like? Well, you still have your two scopes. You still have main and foo. Okay, but if you pass by reference, oops, then you have your x here, and that's a 1. But now, this variable is actually referred to by here. So now, if you change this one to a 2, it, it, you're actually, or maybe the arrow should go the other way, okay? Uh, yeah, maybe it should be pointing this way. So basically, I'll just put a box here. This variable doesn't really, it, there's not another separate variable. It's actually just pointing to the, or referring to the, gosh, this really got messy. There. It's referring to the one in main, okay? That's the, that's the point of pass by reference, is you don't have a separate one. It's just simply, it's like, it's like saying it's an anonymous, uh, it's, a, it's an alias, not anonymous, sorry. Alias, that's the word I'm looking for. Alias, like some, if someone says to you, what's your alias? It basically means like you have another name, but you're the same person, right? So that's what's going on here, okay? So in the code, we skip back to the code, this x here is, uh, and by the way, listen, here's the cool part. I just want to specify this. You don't, I, I, I'm glad I remembered to mention this. You don't need to use the same variable name. Absolutely not, okay? So I could change this to a y and change this to a Y. And notice I'm not printing anything here, right? But I'm C outing X here. So let's run this again. Ready? Look. I still get two. It's still the same output. So uh, it doesn't matter that this is a different variable name. It's still an alias of this X here. Okay? Because remember, we're not passing by value here, we're passing by reference. And all this was achieved by one character, and it's the ampersand character placed in front of the variable. Okay, so uh, I remembered that, okay, so, so I'm teaching to my students here, and well, well you know, or even if you're uh, not, I'm assuming that you're coming from a Python background. So what's important to specify here? Well, there's, there's one kind of like elephant in the room. And that is, in Python, if you access a variable that you haven't declared in a function, it'll go look for it outside of the function in the main scope of a Python function. So for example, in Python, if we did, if we did something like this, if we did um, int z you know, equals 8, and then I went up here and I said uh, something like c out z. Well, what would the way Python, and let's just pretend for a minute that this is Python. The way Python would work is it would say, oh, OK, um, d is z a local variable in the function foo? It would say, OK, no, it's not. So then it would go and look for it outside. Now, n now notice this is another function. Python wouldn't go and look inside another function, but it would look into the main scope, which is basically anything that's not in a function. And then it would find it, and then it would say, aha, it's 8, and then it would, it would print it out here, and it would work. And, stu and people are used to, although it might not be good practice, it actually works in Python. Okay, so like, okay, so I know, I know this course is not Python, uh, but I just have to show you this. So this is a, this is a Python interpreter. I, I just made a quick function called foo and I'm printing out Z. 
And then outside of the function, this is not inside the function, so you can consider this kind of like the global scope of the, uh, of the program. I said z equals 5, and now I run this. Now watch what's going to happen. It prints 5. So even though this function has no knowledge of z, it'll look outside of the function and it, it, and it will work. This is a Python only um, functionality. C, C++ will not work like this. This is like, for, for people who come from a C, C++ background, this seems extremely strange. It's almost like black magic. OK, so let's try doing the same thing here. So I've just got y here. That's declared as a, uh, the, as a local variable that I'm passing to it. And it's passed by reference. And I've got, I'm, see, I'm trying to see out z. z doesn't exist in the function foo, but it does exist in main. Watch what happens when I compile this and try to run it. It says z was not declared in this scope. And um, un, well, it's, I've also got an unused variable because of it. OK? So this isn't going to work. We can't do that. In other words, if we want to use z here, we're going to have to pass it. So if you want z in your function, you have to say explicitly pass z to it. And then here, um, you can say, all right, we also have to specify the um, data type. And it, by the way, like it doesn't have to be z, although I am printing z here. So we could just use the same variable. But I want you to understand that there's no requirement to use the same variable name. Okay? It, it, it makes no difference if the variable name is the same or not. All right? So now, if I try and run this, now it works. Now I get 8 and 2. And 8 was printed here. OK? OK, so the next topic I'd like to uh, touch upon is our default arguments. So if you remember from Python, default arguments are specified with an equal sign in the function header. So it's exactly the same here in C++. We can specify a default argument by saying equals something, just like that. Now, if I call foo, I can, I can explicitly pass z here, and it, I'll still get 8 printing out in the function. So let's, 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 let's just say here, uh, oops, in, in let's, look, let's go in foo. OK. And so if I run this, it, it becomes an 8, because that's what I've passed it explicitly. However, if I was to um, not specify a second argument here, if I, if I just passed x, then let's see what happens. Um, okay, I get a warning for an unused variable. But in fact, look what happens here if you ignore the warning. I say in foo 0 and then 2. So in fact, it's working properly. Just like Python, I can specify uh, a default argument with an equal sign. Okay, And also, just like Python, you can't have um, non-default arguments after a default argument. So default arguments have to come at the end. So that's also like Python as well. OK? Um, like, what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, uh, if, I, if I just get rid of this for a second, and then I said y equals 0. Oops, sorry, mistyped it there. Uh, let's say, let's, let's try doing that. And then we do that. So now we flip the order. We've got the 
um, the default argument first. If I try and compile this uh, and run it, it says um, here, error, default argument missing for uh, parameter 2 of void foo int int. So basically, it, it won't let me flip the order. Your default arguments, because if you think about it, right, um, I'm passing one thing here by value. So where does it go? Does it go into Y or Z? It get, you can't do it this way. You have to have default arguments come at come after non -de now they could both be default arguments that's no that's no issue so if I went you know x equals or sorry y equals 0 and let's say z equals 0 this this is okay so if I run this this should work and it does okay so uh, I will let me just for a second clear this output and go back in and then if I run it again, you'll see I do get the warning still for not using the variable. That's okay. It's still running. It's it's not. There's no error here. Okay. Um, but if I want to get rid of one, I can only get rid of the first one. So once again, final time. Default arguments come after non-default arguments in the function header line here, line six. One thing I may have forgotten to mention is there's no reason why you can't create local variables in a function by declaring them. So on line seven here, I've created another integer variable and initialized it. Uh, and I can only use k in that instance inside the function. In fact, on line 10, when the function goes out of scope, uh, K won't be available anymore. Okay, so that that's basically the same as Python as well. Okay, so my next example here is global variables. Now I know global variables are something that you try to avoid using, but nonetheless um, we still need to understand them because when we look at other people's code, we don't want to scratch our heads and go, I don't understand what's going on. So a global variable is a variable that can be accessed from anywhere in any function. And so if, if you look at the code that I've written here, I've got two different functions, one called uh, foo and one called boo. And they're c outing this variable called g, although g doesn't exist anywhere, not in main. Okay. Now if I, if I did, by the way, if I did create g here, Okay, let's just make it let's just make it zero here. There you go. G is zero. Let's just see if this is gonna work. Ready? So if I try and run this, it's gonna fail. Okay, because it says G was not declared in the scope of the functions, and obviously this is in Python. It's not gonna work. So this is absolutely uh, incorrect, wrong. So the way to do this is to declare the variable the global variable outside of any um, function. So here if I went int g and I said equals zero, notice that I'm not I'm, I'm declaring this outside of any function and so if I run this now, if I compile this and run this, it works. Okay, I'm getting zero zero here. So that's kind of, okay, so this is an example here of a, oops, global variable right there. So it, once again, the criteria here is that I'm declaring it outside of any function. And so now it's available to all the functions. In fact, I could even, you know, put it inside um, main as well and it would work there as well. 
There you go. Zero, zero, zero. Um, however, there is one kind of a, uh, a catch. And that is, what if one of my functions happens to have a variable g also? And let's make this a local variable. And let's make this a 1. And so let's see what would happen in this situation. So let's run this guy. So in this case, notice that I get 1, 0, 0. That means that line 8 and line 9 is printing the local variable that's, a, that's, that's there. Now that, that's, what, that's the behavior that I think you would expect to occur. OK, so here is an example of actually having a local variable with the same variable name as a global variable. Now, I would recommend not doing this, OK? Because why would you use a local variable name that is the same as the global one? I, I don't know why you'd want to do this. But if you did, if you did, there is a way to actually differentiate between them. And it's using the scope resolution operator. So these two guys, back to back, the full colons, are called the scope resolution operator. Scope resolution operator. There you go. I can type. And so they're actually two characters, right? But they're kind of treated as one. And what it does is it essentially says, hey, listen, uh, I know that, you know, use the global one, OK? This one is going to be the local one, and this one's going to be the global one. So when we run this, OK, we're going to get 0 for the first G and a 1 uh, for the second one, right? Because here, the local one is a 1. That's this one. And the global one is a 0 up here. Okay, so that's kind of a, a cool way to differentiate with them. Mind you, you know, we could have simply used a different variable name other than g, and, and then we wouldn't have this issue. For example, if I just, let's say, change this uh, to an x, and then I um, replaced this with an, with an x there, okay? And now, there you go. And of course, this isn't going to work because this isn't x anymore. There you go. And this isn't going to work either because I've changed it. But essentially, um, now my g is local. So if I run this, it, it's going to work just fine, just as it did before. But in this case, I don't need to use the scope resolution operator because I'm using a different variable name. So we use the term, so this is an example of static variables uh, in a function. This is not a static variable in a class. We'll, we'll do that later in the course. But essentially, what we're doing here is we're creating s as a static variable so that the variable is remembered when the function goes out of scope. So if we call foo here, we're calling it you know, uh, five times. But each time we call it, the variable s is going to be remembered. Um, so it's, it's basically like having a global variable, except the difference is, notice here, if I try and it's, it's not global in the sense that other functions can't access it. So if I call boo, if I, if I run, if I try and compile this now, I'm going to get an error. It's going to say s was not declared in this scope. So what's happening here is right here, um, it's not, s is not a global variable, right? We haven't declared it outside of any functions. It's declared inside foo. But we have declared it as being static. 
which, which basically means that its value will not be lost when the function is finished. So the first time it's executed, it'll be 0. But after that, the value of s will be remembered. And so notice here, we're actually um, going into a loop and calling the function five times. Now, if we comment out here uh, the function boo, which has just shown that it, was, it would fail, if we now run this, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as expected. Uh, however, I want you to kind of realize something here. When you go plus plus s, what we're doing there, that's like saying uh, you're adding, you're incrementing s by 1 first, then returning the value. However, we can do the opposite. We could go s plus plus. What this will do is it'll return the value of s first, then increment it. So notice in this case, because s starts out at 0, if we run this, we're going to get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I think that should make it clear what, what the difference between s++ and plus plus s. All right? Um, yeah. Here is another example from uh, Stack Overflow uh, of the plus plus coming first and the plus plus coming after. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. Next day we'll do function overloading. See you next time.